Welcome or welcome back to Barrio Tales. Today's video will be about something that happened in Santa Clara County, California, in the city of San Jose. On November 4th, 2014, Moses Cortinas shot and killed Juan Gulen and non-fatally shot Manuel Castillo. Gulen, Castillo, and another man were hanging out in a vacant apartment when Cortinas and Jose Quiris Sr., who I will refer to from now on as Sr., entered the apartment by kicking open the door. Cortinas said, What's up? You guys are scrapas. Cortinas then began shooting at Castillo, but Castillo escaped out the window after a bullet grazed his stomach. Cortinas then fatally shot Gulen, who had been hiding. Cortinas claimed he shot Gulen after Gulen attacked him with the pole. Moses Cortinas and Jose Quiras Sr. are Norteños from the El Hoya Palmas gang to be exact. The motive for the murder of Juan Gulen was that the week prior, Jose Quiras Sr. was in some sort of altercation with Serenos the week prior. Senior is a first generation El Hoyo Palmas gang member since he was 15 or 16 years old. He met Moses Cortinas around 2009 when they were in custody together. Cortinas told Senior that he Cortinas was a fifth generation El Hoyo Palmas gang member. In 2014, Senior had a son, Jose Quiras Jr., who I will refer to from now on as Junior. Junior was experiencing pressure in the form of Sereno gang activity. Junior had never been jumped into a gang, but he associated with Norteños and put himself a little bit out there as Northerner. Sereno's wrote graffiti on Junior's mother's walls and broke her windows in an attempt to provoke Junior. After Sereno's repeatedly broke Junior's car windows, Senior felt compelled to have to do something about it. Senior believed the harassment was coming from a young group of Sereno's in the Via Monte area. On October 24, 2014, Senior, Junior, Cortinez, and another man drove to Via Monte to look for the Sereños who had been harassing Junior. Cortinez was wearing a blue jersey to make himself look like a Southerner in an attempt to bring some out. Senior saw someone he believed to be a Southerner and confronted the man. The man tried to run, but Senior stabbed him in the back with a small pocket knife. After that event, the conflict between the two groups escalated, and the Southerners retaliated at Junior's mother's residence, breaking her windows and tagging her apartment. In the following days, Senior and Cortinas exchanged text messages with each other about the conflict. On November 4th, 2014, Senior got a call from Junior, who wanted to buy some marijuana in the Via Monte area. Senior knew there were Southerners in the area, so he agreed to go with Junior to make sure nobody fucks with him. Cortinas volunteered to go with them. After they got the marijuana, the man who gave it to them told them, Hey, you know those guys that broke your windshield? They're right there, indicating a nearby apartment building. Senior said, I'm going to talk to these guys, and got out of the car. Cortinas got out and followed Senior. They saw someone in a carport, and the person told them there were Southerners partying upstairs in an empty apartment. Senior and Cortinez went upstairs and looked through a window into the apartment where Senior saw someone scrambling around. Senior thought the person was a Sereno. Senior kicked open the door, entered the apartment, and yelled out, Hey! Cortinez entered the apartment behind Senior. Senior saw someone scrambling around in the back, and Cortinez began shooting. Senior saw a young man jumping headfirst out of a window. Cortinez fired two shots at him. Senior then ran out of the apartment, and he heard three more shots fired. Junior had backed the car into the neighboring alley, so Senior got in and told him, Let's go, let's go, let's get the fuck out of here. While Junior was fumbling with the keys, Cortinas got into the car as well. Senior asked Cortinas, What the fuck did you do? Cortinas responded, I shot two of them. Cortinas said he had gone to a back room and one of the occupants had hit him with a stick, so Cortinas shot him. The police later interviewed Cortinas twice. After initially lying about his whereabouts and claiming another person was responsible for the shootings, Cortinas admitted he had been the shooter. He claimed Senior pressured him into it. Cortinas admitted he fired two shots at the man who jumped out the window, and when he, Cortinas, walked into a back bedroom, he was hit with a 2x4 by a second man he had seen. Cortinas admitted he shot at the man and ran out of the apartment. He fired five shots total. However, at trial, Cortinas testified in his defense. He testified that Senior had directed him, Cortinas, to go with them to get the marijuana in Via Monte, and that he felt he had no choice. Cortinas knew about the stabbing incident the prior week because he was present at the incident. Senior had given him a gun after the incident, and Cortinas saw that it was loaded with five rounds. Cortinas admitted he had it in his pocket when they were approaching the apartment. He testified that Senior kicked open the door and motioned for Cortinas to enter. 
Cortina saw some rapid movement in a hallway and fired the gun two times in the direction of the movement. Cortina's denied he intended to hit anyone. Cortina saw the man jump out a window and he walked toward the back bedroom whereupon he was hit with a heavy stick or pole. Cortina's testified that out of a reflex reaction, he started firing off multiple shots. He denied that he intended to shoot anyone and denied he even saw anyone. The evidence showed Cortina's committed the killing as a result of a planned retaliatory attack against gang members supporting a finding of premeditation. Moses Cortina's, Jose Kira Sr., Jose Kiras Jr. and Brandon Brown were all arrested and charged with the murder of Juan Gulen and attempted murder of Manuel Castillo. Moses Cortinas was convicted of first degree murder, attempted murder with gang and firearm enhancements. Moses Cortinas was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole consecutive to terms of 30 years to life, 50 years to life, and 3 years. Brandon Brown was convicted. It's unclear what his role in this crime was, whether or not he was a participant in the murder, but Brandon Brown arrived to Sierra Conservation Center on July 24th, 2023. Brandon will be eligible for parole in May 2032. Jose Kiras Jr. is not currently in no prison, so that leaves the possibilities that he may have beaten the case or his case was handled in juvenile court, which dispositions are confidential. Jose Kira Sr. arrived to California Medical Facility on May 1st, 2018. He will be eligible for parole in November 2039.